So joining us today is Darren Roberts, who I'm pleased to let you know, will be one of our keynote speakers at the annual meeting and convention in Ocean City, Maryland. And Darren has an incredible personal story, Harvard Law grad, who decided to pursue his dream of coaching in the NFL. Then he went on to establish the Center for Sports Leadership and Innovation at the University of Texas, where he is a professor. So Darren, before, might as well just jump right on into it. So let's start with your life-changing decision to pursue a job in the NFL versus a six-figure job at a prestigious law firm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, first, John, thanks for, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to, to joining you in June. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I was at Harvard Law School, was on track to become a practicing attorney. Um, in the summer before I graduated, went to work a football camp just on a whim and loved it. And, um, you know, my, my dean at the time was Elena Kagan. And I remember sitting in her office and I asked her, I said, um, I'm thinking about being a coach and I'm not sure I want to practice right now. She said, you know what, Darren, if you go and coach for 30 years or three years, I promise you after you finish, there will still be legal issues. So the law <laughs> isn't going anywhere. So if you get a gig in the NFL, take it. And uh, wrote 32 letters to every team in the NFL. Um, and, and got the one yes, you know, 31 rejections and started with the Kansas City Chiefs. So it's been a fun ride since then. That's awesome. So let's start with the title of your book. So what do you mean by leadership as a contact sport? Yeah, so leadership as a contact sport, what I really talk about in this, in this conversation is uh, when you take all the leadership philosophy and the theories, it really boils down to how you deal with people. So the, the starting point is vulnerability and empathy. And I know a lot of you are familiar with uh, the work of Dr. Brene Brown. Um, she's done work around how vulnerability and empathy, if used by leaders, can really help to build teams and build momentum. And you know, prior to her work, a lot of people saw empathy and vulnerability as weaknesses when it comes to leadership. So we really want to reframe that concept during our conversation and just talk about how leaders can become more in tune with the members of the team. So what do you think is core to effective leadership, though? I think honesty. Uh, I think honesty and transparency. Uh, if you look at a lot of the research and you, you ask team members what they, what they want in a leader, um, honesty and transparency. So the people on your team want to believe that when you type or you write or you say something, that is what you mean. And we've also found in the research that once you lose those two uh, components and traits, it's hard to get it back. So it starts with basics like honesty. And then I think you need to have a leader who's going to be uh, somewhat of a visionary. Um, people want to believe not in just the work they're doing now, and especially you look at how much disruption is going on in the credit union market and that, in that sector. You know, they also want to they want to believe that their leader is kind of peeking around the corner and building a bold vision for the future. That's great. So I understand part of the class that you teach to all freshman athletes includes a section on financial literacy, which, as you know, credit unions are highly committed to encourage financial education across all age groups throughout the country. So what do you think financial literacy is so important? Why do you think financial literacy is so important, especially for young people? Yes. So that's a great question, John. Um, my mom was a, an elementary school principal uh, for 30 years. My dad was a federal employee with the U.S. Department of Agriculture for 35 years. And so I grew up in a small town in East Texas. And for us, um, both the state and the federal credit unions, those were, that was my first exposure to liquidity. I mean, that's the way that uh, when it came to loans for cars or home improvement projects, that is the way that my parents accessed capital. So that's why I'm, I'm excited to be you know, joining you in June, because that's what I grew up with. If you look at our young people today, um, financial literacy classes, unfortunately, are some of the first classes that are on the chopping blocks when it comes to high schools cutting back curricula. Um, and that's because of state, you know, standardized testing they want to teach tests and all of the periphery topics get lost. And in my five years of teaching this, this topic, um, both kids from affluent households, from, from um, you know, low to, to, to middle socioeconomic um, families, 
they're all coming in with a fairly low level of financial acumen. And for me, financial literacy equates into freedom and the ability to have options. And so, you know, in my class, I teach um, the difference between credit cards and debit cards and how to write a check and uh, what does a credit score mean and what should you look for in your first, you know, rent agreement. Um, and these are lessons that are important. And I think that the work that credit unions are doing in the communities just help to build those good practices. That's fantastic. Darren, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time with us today. Um, can't wait to hear more about this. Can't wait to see you in Ocean City on June 3rd uh, for our annual meeting and convention. And again, thanks so much for taking the time today. No, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to getting getting back to Maryland. I used to recruit that area and looking forward to having some good crab cakes and enjoying the next <laughs> Be great to have you. Have a good one. You too.